ChatGPT is one of the most trending topics in the tech world right now. You'll see tons of examples throughout the whole internet where it just generates entire code sections you can use in your projects and it even gives you explanations for these. And I was asking myself, can this take over the job of a developer? And can we really build a functional app just by using ChatGPT? So I took the challenge of building a whole node app with a search function for Android just by using the new AI. Something that's normally close to impossible for someone who is not an Android developer. And you will be surprised about the results. Through this video you will learn how good the code is that ChatGPT generated, evaluated by an experienced Android developer and at which things it's simply not good. For this challenge there are only three rules. Rule number one. For this challenge, I'm not allowed to write any logic or code by myself. Rule number two, I am allowed to paste code ChatGPT generated partly or as a whole. So I'm really only allowed to ask the questions and take the code it gives me and paste it into Android Studio to build the app. And rule number three, I'm also allowed to delete code ChatGPT generated. Before starting with this, I knew the challenge wouldn't lie in actually getting good code parts, but getting parts that work together and make a functional app. So I started thinking about how I could approach this. One thing we need to keep in mind is that the dataset of ChatGPT is based on material from 2021, which is why we can't use the latest Android technologies like its modern UI framework Jetpack Compose. Therefore, I decided to stick to the old school approach and build the UI using XML. And before asking ChatGPT about generating the first layout file, I had to think about if I want to use activities or fragments for this. While in a real Android app it would be a no-brainer for me to use fragments for every single screen, I thought this would make things more complex when it comes to navigation. So I went with the safer approach of actually using two activities. One for the node list screen and one for the node detail screen. I knew that I could start generating the code, so I asked ChatGPT very detailed about generating an initial layout and basic code for our main activity. And it actually gave me something that looked very similar to what I asked for. It needed some adjustments, but then it looked like what I wanted. I just got a whole screen's layout from an AI, which is super cool. However, looking at the main activity code, we noticed that ChatGPT was trained on an older dataset, since it included Kotlin synthetics, which is a completely outdated approach to getting view references. Before adding functionality to our node list screen, I thought it's actually smart to let ChatGPT know about our node detail screen first. So I went ahead and generated a node detail activity. And the the generated layout for the node detail activity looked really good. Usually I'd use something like floating action buttons for adding and saving a node, however for that I would have needed icon resources which ChatGPT couldn't give me. So I just created a plain button. It's not a beautiful but functional design. I also forgot a button on our node list screen to get to the node detail screen to add a node, so I quickly asked it to adjust the layout and it did exactly what I wanted. It also perfectly generated the code to navigate to the node detail activity after clicking that button. To generate the database I had to tell ChatGPT exactly what a node is and how how I want to interact with the database. And what I thought will be one of the hardest parts turned out to be one of the easiest ones. It generated a whole database schema, including a DAO, a singleton and a node list view model to interact with it. However, at this point I didn't yet know about all the challenges this will bring later. One thing that looked a bit weird to me was the view model it generated. It created its own coroutine scope to execute all the DAO's functions on the IO thread, something that wouldn't be necessary if the DAO function would have been suspend functions. This seemed a bit round to me, but I took it since it's technically code that works. Another thing that I would do differently in an app is that I would avoid using the application context in a view model like here, so I would avoid using Android view model. While this will not cause any memory leaks, it will actually make your view model not locally unit testable. So you would have to make them instrument tests and run them on an actual emulator which is slower. In our example, passing the application context is of course necessary since I advise ChatGPT to initialize our database directly in the view model to avoid needing to set up some kind of dependency injection mechanism. And I know that many beginners actually follow this practice of using Android view model since they might not be as familiar with unit testing as an experienced Android developer is. However, since there seems to be so much content around Android view model online, it seems that ChatGPT actually learned from that, which is not good in this case. Next, I needed the Gradle dependencies for Room, which it quickly gave me. I also decided to use suspend functions for all functions in our node DAO since I thought it'll be easier to interact with it that way, especially when it comes to searching for nodes. And then it also adjusted our view model with suspend functions as you can see here. This is another mistake ChatGPT did here. You should never expose suspend functions in a view model, since that will require you to launch a curtain in lifecycle scope in your UI to execute these functions from a view model, which means they will be cancelled if the UI is actually destroyed, for example after a screen rotation. Therefore always execute suspend functions in a view model using view model scope and launch a new coroutine that way, since view model scope will outlive the lifecycle of an activity or a fragment. But luckily ChatGPT quickly did that change when I asked for it. 
However, after asking it for the dependency I need for ViewModel Scope, it just spit out a lot of trash that did not work. After asking several times, I asked the question as if I had an error and it finally gave me the correct dependency. Next, I asked it to generate an XML layout for the node items, including a RecyclerView adapter for it using DiffUtil. DiffUtil is used to calculate the differences between two lists and only update those items that changed, which is very efficient. And then something weird happened. ChatGPT stopped responding because of its character limit, but when I asked it to continue, it gave me a completely different XML file together with a completely different adapter. Do you notice how it uses two different approaches for DiffUtil here? I like the second code more though and asked it to generate the code for main activity. And surprisingly, it gave me all the code I wanted, even with a swipe to dismiss callbacks so that we can swipe our nodes to the left to delete them. I took all the code and pasted it in my activity, but ChatGPT used a way to access an item in the recycler view that did not work. I knew how it would work, but I had to get it to respond with that since I'm not allowed to write code on my own. I asked for that again and again, but that seemed to have completely messed up ChatGPT. It responded with new implementations of adapters that it has not responded with first, and the only way I could get it to use the correct approach is to be really, really exact with my wording. Did this now mess up the whole process since ChatGPT does not know which adapter I'm referring to anymore, I decided to keep going and got the code to navigate to the node detail screen after clicking an item. Time to create a node detail view model, which should be capable of loading a single node by its ID and saving a node in our database. It again needed some restructuring, but then gave me something usable, including a factory for the view model, which is needed if we want to pass our own parameters to its constructor. I then thought I needed a way to update the node locally in our view model without updating it in the database whenever our text changed. After some tries, ChatGPT gave me what I wanted. Then the project included everything I thought would be needed to run our app. I only needed to add one more dependency to use room with coroutines. So now it's finally time to run the app. And we got a Gradle error. After asking ChatGPT about it, it did not give me an answer that worked. I ended up removing an invalid dependency ChatGPT gave me earlier, and after fixing another little issue, the project finally compiled. So do we now have a working node app generated by AI? When clicking on add, the app is properly navigating to the node detail screen. Let's enter a title and content and hit save. And nothing happens. The node is not in our database. For me, it was clear that I didn't get this far just to give up. I will keep trying to have a functional app. One bug was that there was no initial node created in the node detail view model when clicking on add. I fixed it and relaunched the app. This time I got an application not responding error after clicking add and I had absolutely no idea why. After getting a good night of sleep, I found out what the issue was. The listeners for when the text changes ran into an infinite loop, which completely blocked the UI from updating. I realized these listeners aren't even necessary, so I simply removed them. I also fixed another issue that Room used minus one as the ID for new nodes instead of generating a new one. And after adding a call to show all nodes when the search field is empty, the app was finally working. I ended up changing the layout for nodes to make it a bit more beautiful and then adding new nodes worked like a charm. Searching for nodes was working as well and even deleting existing nodes by swiping them away was working perfectly fine. And yes, it was even surviving screen rotations which is often a pain to deal with in Android. So I really managed to build a functional app by not typing a single character on my own. What do we learn from this? Well, I think that ChatGPT is a very impressive technology, I would have never been able to build this app without having experience as an Android developer. Sometimes I had to be super specific with my questions and tell it exactly what I needed just so that it spit out that code. Building such a project without AI would have maybe cost me an hour. With ChatGPT, it took me almost four times as long. So in the end, ChatGPT is a great tool that can help you find solutions to your errors similar to Google, but you still have to know how to exactly phrase your questions. And to phrase them that exactly, you have to be a developer and know all the technical terms in APIs. Otherwise, you can forget being able to let AIs create fully functional apps for you, at least in 2020. So what do you think? Will the new generations of AI allow non-developers to build software or will there always be a market for us and AI will remain a tool just like Google? Let us know that down below. 